Right now, I'd like to introduce uh, Minister Alan Tipton from uh, Parkview Church of Christ. Uh, he was a speaker at the high school Veterans Day assembly last year, and we were so impressed with his uh, words there that we invited him to uh, come out today and, and share some of his insight with us. Mr. Tipton. Thank you all for coming out this morning. It's a beautiful day. Um, the Lord blesses us in many ways. I think we were blessed to hear some beautiful voices this morning, don't you? Amen. Secondary blessing for me, I guess I'm at that point in my life. Uh, thank you. Mr. Williams for referring to me as a dignitary. That's never happened before. <laughs> I do want to thank the American Legion for asking me to speak this morning and Mr. Clark for calling me on the phone and encouraging me and expressing his confidence in me on behalf of the American Legion and I'll do my best. Um, the presence of each one of you this morning uh, is a great encouragement. Um, there's nothing like seeing people who come to uh, show respect in this day and age. I, I uh, understand that more and more the older I get. Why, why do we memorialize, memorialize the dead? I think that's an important question, but the simple answer, I think, is because we love them. Why do we love them? Well, we love them because they demonstrated love to us. As we mature in life, we appreciate that love that we can see in the action of other people. It, it, it kind of demonstrates or makes true um, that old saying that actions speak louder than words. Thank you. So as we mature, I, I think about the words of the Apostle Paul he shared in 1 Corinthians 13, and I know a lot of times that we think about that as the love chapter, but it's so much more than that. He says, starting in verse 11, when I was a child, my speech, feelings, and thinking were all those as a child. And now that I am an adult, I have no more use for childish ways. What we see now is like a dim image in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. What we know now is only partial. Then it will be complete, as complete as God's knowledge of me. Meanwhile, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Love makes faith and hope possible. Without love... No one would choose to believe in anyone greater than themselves. No one would serve or sacrifice for a neighbor without love. Without love, no one would demonstrate any action or say anything to provide hope for another person. Hope, faith, and love are intrinsically linked to each other. Her hands are up. That's a good sign. <laughs> I'm trying to shoot up. Thank you. I'm trying. Mitzi's tough. I, I have a lot of confidence and hope in Mitzi's toughness. And this morning, it's hope, the word hope that I want to focus on. The H in hope stands for honoring the dead who have demonstrated faith and love to us. We gather together to show our respect for all the dead who have paved the way for all of us. It's soldiers who have gave it all or, or were willing to give it all. Hope comes from family and friends who encouraged us in this life. Even those that we have never met before who have gone before us 
in hope made our li livelihood possible. Now the O in hope stands for opportunities provided by those who had faith in each other and love for the United States of America. I listened to a lot of uh, Memorial Day speeches in preparation for this, and there were a couple of quotes that I want to share with you that really impressed me, and I'm a child that uh, grew up in his heyday in the 80s, so naturally I love President Reagan very much. In November 11th of 1985, he says this, it is, in an odd way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our minds as old and wise. We see them as something like founding fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. And all we can do is remember. Then, on Veterans Day, on March 26, 1986, in Arlington Cemetery, he shared these words. He said, all of these men were different, but they shared this in common. They loved America very much. There was nothing they wouldn't do for her, and they loved with the sureness of the young. It's hard not to think of the young in a place like this, for it's the young who do the fighting and dying when peace fails and a war begins. Not far from here is a statue of three servicemen, the three fighting boys of Vietnam. It too has majesty and more. Perhaps you've seen it. Three rough, bo three rough boys walking together, looking ahead with a steady gaze. There's something wounded about them a kind of resigned toughness. But there's an unexpected tenderness too. At first you really don't notice, but then you see it. The three are touching each other as if they're supporting each other, helping each other on. I know that many veterans of Vietnam will gather today, some of them perhaps by the wall, and they're still helping each other. They were quite a group, the boys of Vietnam, boys who fought a terrible and vicious war without enough support from home, boys who were dodging bullets while we debated the efficacy of the battle. It was often our poor who fought in that war. It was the unpa unpampered boys of the working class who picked up the rifles and went on the march. They learned not to rely on us they learned to rely on each other. And they were special in another way. They chose to be faithful. They chose to reject the fashionable skepticism of their time. They chose to believe and answer the call of duty. They had a wild, wild courage of youth. They seized certainty from the heart of an ambivalent age, and they stood for something. I look upon all of you this morning and I see that same thing. We have so much skepticism in our country right now, so much division from the top down. It doesn't matter what party you're a member of. It doesn't matter what church you go to or whether you go to one at all. There is the real division in our country. Among the old, among the young, among the races, among the genders, I don't even understand some of that. But you folks this morning represent something different. You represent faith and hope and love just by your attendance. Just like those young men that gave their lives, your presence this morning is an offering of a sacrifice of your time. 
It's the little things in life that matter. It's the little unnoticed deeds that matter. It's the selfless service for your neighbor that matters. Look, you may be old. I'm getting there. I feel it more and more every day. But you can still serve. Yeah, you, you may not be able to lift sticks and stones anymore or move mountains. But you can visit. You can encourage. You can share wisdom. You can be loving. You can provide hope for our young people who seem to be without that in their lives. Now back to my an acronym. The P in hope stands for perseverance. My generation, I'm 55, we're getting ready to turn 55, and my children, we have no idea what it is to live with daily suffering. None. I was raised in a good home. We didn't have a lot of money, but I was always loved. I never worried about what I was going to wear, what I was going to eat, whether my parents loved me. I never worried about even going to war as a child. I never dreamed that one day I would become a member of our serving forces. But my parents, their generation was different. They knew what it was to live with that, would live with daily suffering. But they would say, no, we didn't. We didn't know. Our parents loved us. We had plenty to eat. So I'm going to go back one more generation. My grandma Irma, who I loved very, very much, she lived in a time where her brothers were so malnourished, they had rickets. She lived in a time where her father, suffering with tuberculosis, her mother, having all these young'uns in her household, found herself pregnant. There wasn't enough food for the kids that she already had. So, my great-grandma wrote a letter to relatives asking if they would raise her child for her. And then their wisdom, they wrote back and told her she would regret it for the rest of her life. And she raised that family. Sometimes they had large sandwiches to eat because that's all they had. Sometimes she would bake a pie and that's all they would have to eat is that pie. And, and many of you could tell stories like that. Another story from that generation, I think of my Aunt Jean Holt. Uh, Newtown resident. Her mother died when she was 12 years old. She raised my grandfather and his brothers and his sister. 12-year-old mother who was never expecting to be a mother at that age, just to be an older sister. And she raised them I think about my grandma June Staggs. She had a hard life. As a younger woman, a really hard life. She was in an abusive marriage. She got out of there. And she raised three girls on her own. The factory job, working at the box factory, living with the stain of divorce. And that was quite a different time being a divorced woman than it is now. And then there's the story of my wife's grandmother, Fern Colton. Her husband, Junior, left for the war while she was pregnant. And I believe she was five months pregnant when she got the letter and the visit saying that Junior's father, her son, Junior, his father was killed. And though there she was, 
raising my father-in-law all by herself for a time. These are people who knew what it was to live without faith, hope, and love, but they didn't choose to live that way. They choose to, to love unquestionably, unswervingly. They chose to be faithful to their families even when times were so hard. They choose to provide hope for those family members that they raised. Now when I got to the letter E in hope, it was hard for me to pick out a word. And I'll admit I had to go to a thesaurus and Google it even to come up with ideas. There's edification. There's encouragement. There's excellence. But all those who have shown us faith when we let them down, all of those who loved us when we were unlovable, all of those who had hope in us even when we were hopeless, those incredible people were empathetic with us. The E in hope stands for empathy. That's an important word today. There's all kinds of wisdom in this crowd. I know so many of you very, very well. You have such wisdom and love and hope and faith to share with your fellow men. But it's going to require that you empathize with them. They may not have the same viewpoint on sexuality that you do. They may not have the same viewpoint about religion that you do. Those are just a couple of things that seem to be divisive topics. But if you shut them out and you don't empathize with them, I'm not saying that you have to embrace their ideals, but if you won't listen, why would you expect them to listen to you? Why were all those people I talked about empathetic with us when we were hopeless, unlovable, and untrustworthy? Those people who paved the way for our easy lifestyle and prosperity, quote, showed an ability to understand and share the feelings of another, end quote. You know who said that? Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> That's the definition of empathy. That's how empathy is truly defined. An ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Does it say anything about accepting those feelings? Does it say anything of making them your feelings and your viewpoints? It does not. It only asks you to share Empathy. Empathy is really, if nothing else, and this is my definition, it's a choice to face up to your own past mistakes and invest in the wisdom of repentance, restoration, and reconciliation. And I'm afraid our Western culture is all too often unwilling to be empathetic with people they don't agree with, and even those that they do. Even people we love cancel us out. Even people we love, it's easier just not to talk to them. Why go there? Why pick a fight? Listen. If you don't hear anything else that I have to share with you this morning, it's this. The greatest man who ever lived shed his royal robe of light and truth in heaven. He came down here to empathize with us. God chose to empathize with us. You know how we are. 
Jesus' empathy for all of us was his greatest living and greatest dying demonstration of love and empathy to the world. He identified with us living and showed us a loving way to live. And he identified with our sin when he died and showed us how to die in a loving manner. And at my church, I'm not saying that we have the cornerstone on this, but we memorialize Jesus every week. In my mind, it's only right for us to gather together once a year at least and demonstrate our hope to each other by remembering all of those who have passed on before us. Some of them gave it all, defending our liberty and freedom. Others simply gave it all to provide for our well-being and our daily happiness. So in turn, it's our obligation to show hope to the next generation, having faith that they will love each other and be empathetic with the generation after them. God bless you all. Hug your friends and family often. Thank you.